Well, we're approaching the great American holiday of Thanksgiving. So what do you think of when you hear the word Thanksgiving? Turkey. Football. I never think of that. What else do you think of? Grace. Did someone say grace? Praise. Family. No one has family stress as one thing that comes to mind. No, I'm sure none of us have that. Some families have great traditions around Thanksgiving and other holidays. And some families have this tradition of going around the dinner table and everybody saying something they're thankful for before you eat. My family doesn't have that tradition. <laughs> we just get in there and eat. But I remember this one Thanksgiving when I was a kid, and my parents had just built our house. And, um, you know, everything was new. The appliances were all new, and they were avocado green. The countertops were orange. It was cool. And uh, so we were having Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving dinner at our house. And so, like, both sides of the family were there. Big, big group. My mom goes to check on the turkey, baste it or something. I don't know. That was before they had turkey bags. And she can't get the door open on the oven. And for some reason, as a kid, I thought that was really funny. My mom did not. Now, finally, uh, Grandpa was able to get the door open, and the turkey was fine. Um, my mom was a wee bit stressed. Um, and thankfully, that did not become a Thanksgiving tradition at our house. And for some reason, my mom still doesn't find that story funny. <laughs> traditions become traditions because of intention. I've worked in the church uh, for most of my adult life, and December, for some reason, is really busy in church, uh, especially if you're doing the children's Christmas musical. It's really busy. So I, a um, long time ago, started putting up our Christmas tree the day after Thanksgiving. We didn't have anything going on that day. I don't like to shop. So that's when the Christmas tree went up, because if we didn't do it then, it might not get put up. And... Um, you, so that's a tradition that we have. My, my kids think it needs to go up immediately. Um, so another tradition in my family is Buckeyes, the candy that tastes like Reese's Cups. It looks like a Buckeye nut. My mom made those when I was growing up every Christmas. And then I started making them. And if I don't make them, there's a lot of pouting. It's a tradition. And traditions... Like habits form when we do the same thing over and over. And one habit that I have tried to form is being grateful. Gratitude it doesn't always come easily to me. Sometimes I take things for granted. I take people for granted. When I don't get what I want or what I think I ought to have, I can become ungrateful. Being grateful or ungrateful, it doesn't really seem like it's that big of a deal. It's not like lying or stealing, but it is a big deal. The decision we make to be grateful or not makes a difference in our personal lives and in the lives of those around us. My daughter, Angel, just had a birthday, and she received gifts and cards with money, and I told her, you need to write some thank you notes. And for some reason, she didn't think that sounded like fun at all. Um, but I made her do it anyway. Um, we teach our children to say thank you. We teach our children to write thank you notes. But as we get older, sometimes we forget because we don't have our parents reminding us. Now, what do you say? Apparently, being grateful is good for your health, mentally and physically. Being grateful lowers blood pressure improves sleep, improves relationships, reduces stress, reduces toxic emotions, and boosts optimism. Who wouldn't want that? It also connects us with something bigger than ourselves. Have you ever prayed for something specific? Like you were sick, you had the flu or something. I, I know when I have a sinus infection, I just pray, 
God, either get me better or just take me now. I'm so miserable. But, you know, sometimes we pray to be healed from, you know, from sickness um, or to be kept safe on the way somewhere. You know, Christians, they call that traveling mercies. Nobody else. They just say, I hope you have a safe trip. No, Christians say, we're going to pray for traveling mercies. I just think that's funny. Maybe you've prayed that your child would stay out of the principal's office this week. Maybe you've even prayed for a parking space. Well, did you receive what you prayed for? Did you get over the flu? Did your child maybe stay out of trouble a couple days? And did you thank God for answering that prayer? I don't know about you, but I often forget to say thank you. I'm sure that we can all name some prayers that God did not answer to our satisfaction. Sometimes people don't get well when we pray for them. Uh, sometimes people don't arrive safely and, and our kids don't stay out of trouble. When that happens, do we complain to God? Now, I'm not saying it's wrong to tell God that you're unhappy, that your prayer was not answered the way you wanted. God can take it. God is big enough to take our crying out, why God, why? But sometimes I've prayed for things and I've been really glad that God didn't answer it the way I wanted because it turned out to be better. God's way turned out to be better than what I had prayed for. Many years ago, an elderly English pastor was famous for his pulpit prayers. He always found something to thank God for, even in bad times. One stormy Sunday morning when things were going really bad for everybody in the community, including this pastor, he got up in the pulpit to pray. And one of the people out in the congregation thought, this is going to be the Sunday he doesn't have anything to be thankful for. And the pastor began his prayer. We thank thee, O God, that it is not always like this. <laughs> There's always something to be thankful for. But on the other hand, when our prayers are answered the way we want, how often do we just go on with life, happy that things worked out, but forgetting to thank the giver of the answered prayer? Our scripture today is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, starting with verse 11. Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee on his way to Jerusalem. I just want to say that this is such a great example for us. Jesus traveled. Jesus didn't just stay at home or stay in the synagogue and wait for people to come to him. Jesus went to where the people were. Jesus traveled. And he was between Samaria and Galilee. And if you know anything about Samaritans, you will know that the Jews did not like them. They were looked down on. They were like dirt. And Jews would do anything to avoid coming in contact with a Samaritan. They would even take the long way just to avoid going through Samaria. But Jesus didn't didn't have that problem. Jesus would go into Samaria. Here he is along the border. And as he went into a village, 10 men with a skin disease met him. Now, skin disease, that could be leprosy. It, it could be any problem with the skin that doesn't clear up. And once you have that, you're out of there. You are out of your community. You have to go live in a place with other people with leprosy. And you, you can't be with your family, you can't give anybody a hug, you can't go to work, you can't support your family. It's, it's terrible. Not only was the skin disease terrible, but the consequences of that were also terrible. So these 10 men meet Jesus, but they stood at a distance because if you had leprosy, you couldn't come close to anybody. So they shouted, Jesus, teacher, have mercy on us. Mercy, not just because a skin disease is terrible. Have mercy on me. I can't be with my family. I can't support my family. When he saw them, he told them, show yourselves to the priest. 
So if you had a skin disease and it got better, you had to go to the priest, and the priest would decide whether you were healed or not, and whether or not you could go home or not. So as they went, the lepers, the ten lepers, they go to show themselves to the, to the priest. As they went, they were made clean. When one of them saw that he was healed, he turned back and praised God in a loud voice. He quickly bowed at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And the writer of Luke thinks it's important to let us know the man was a Samaritan. Which implies that the rest of them were maybe Jews. Jesus asked, weren't ten men made clean? Where are the other nine? Only this foreigner came back to praise God. So all these men knew the source of their healing, but only one of them stopped and went back. I mean, can you imagine if you, if you were actually healed from this disease, you would want to go home. And so it would be, it would be natural to maybe forget to go back and say thank you. But one man did. He went back and he said, thank you. Jesus told that man, get up and go home. Your faith has made you well. Why, I wondered, why did Jesus say that? Because he was already healed. Why did he say, your faith has made you well? I think because the man was faithful to go back and say thank you, I think he got an extra blessing. The Greek word for well is translated as saved or to bring to safety. So Jesus says to the man, your faith has made you well, has saved you, has brought you to safety. Being grateful is important. Whether or not you express your thanks does make a difference in your life. Being ungrateful leads to discontent, leads to unhappiness. And that leads to desiring things that we shouldn't and wanting to gain things that we're not supposed to have. Whatever you have, be grateful. Say thank you. Be content. Don't wish for more. Be the one who turns around and says, thank you. Being grateful gets our eyes off of ourselves and onto God where they should be. Be the one who says thank you. When you go to the grocery store, have you thanked God that you can buy food? Do you remember that some folks can't? They can't just go to the grocery store and get whatever they want when they want it. And when other people are shopping and complaining that once again, this store that shall remain unnamed has rearranged all of its aisles and I can't find anything, <laughs> be the one who says, thank you, God, that we have so much to choose from. I can't even find what I'm looking for. <laughs> have you thanked God for your home? I don't know how many of you watch um, HGTV or home improvement shows. And it can, it, it can be bad. It can give you some ideas, but it can give you some bad ideas, too. Um, you know, you can watch that. There was one show I was watching, and they were making fun of the kitchen cabinets in this house. Ugh, these have to go. They are so early 90s. And I looked, and I said, those are my cabinets. <laughs> what? Now I have to redo my kitchen because I don't want to be lame. I don't want to be out of date. But we should be the ones who say, thank you, God for my house. Thank you, God, I have a place to call home, to come home to, because so many people don't have that. I'm thankful I have a soft place to, sh to sleep. 
And I often think of people in war-torn areas that may not even have a home the next day. That makes me very grateful for what I have. Is that my microphone that's doing that? Don't move. Don't move. Okay. What about your vehicle? Have you thanked God for your vehicle? Have you offered it to God? God, what could I do with my car? Could I run an errand for somebody, take someone to an appointment, deliver a meal? I mean, yes, it's starting to rust, and there are French fries and papers all over it. Okay, maybe that's just mine. But still, it runs. Be the one who says thank you that I have a car that runs. Do you think of giving, whether it's money, time, skills, possessions? Do you think of giving as giving out of your stuff, giving out of what you have? Or do you see it as just returning a fraction of what already belongs to God? Be the one who says, God, I know all this belongs to you. So here, take, take some of it back and use it however you want to. We are not meant to be self-sufficient. God is our provider, and we need to acknowledge that. Now, those of you that are on social media, be the one who posts the positive things, who posts funny cat videos, something that will make people laugh and feel better. And even if we're not on social media, we can all take time each night before bed to name three things that we're grateful for. We can develop this habit of being grateful. Remember how I read in the scripture passage that Jesus told the men to go show themselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. So Jesus didn't heal them immediately. They had to start walking. And as they went, they were cleansed. We have to start walking. We have to have faith. We have to be grateful even if we don't feel like it. In the midst of uncertainty, when times are hard, when we are grieving, we can still give thanks to God, and we should. God deserves our thanks and praise. And when we do that, how will it change us? How might it change our community? If we all started smiling and saying thank you to the person that hands us our food through the drive through window, what kind of effect might that have? on us, on them. If I decide that I have enough and I don't need whatever the latest gadget is, what could I do with the money I'll save by not buying it? Or maybe I go through my closets and I see all these clothes I never wear. Who might benefit from me giving those away? May we each be one who gives thanks to God. Psalm 103.2 says, Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Let's pray. God, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done and all that you are doing and will do. May we never forget to say thank you. Amen.